So having just learned about Planck's quantized energy, we're going to now see how that idea of quantizing energy plays out in atoms. So you'll recall that an atom has a center of positive charge, the nucleus, and I've represented it here with a plus. And the electrons go around on the outside so this E represents an electron. So this electron is currently going around that nucleus. You can picture it going around like this. We'll learn later that's not actually what it does. But in the Bohr model we can kind of visualize it this way and that's okay. And so <coughs> as we learned yesterday or whenever we watched that last video, the energy that an inner electron can have is limited. The electron can have that energy, or it can have that energy, or it can have that energy. So each one of these rings represents a different energy state, the farthest one out being the woo, being the highest one. And so there's names for these different states. The lowest is called the ground state. So we have these we have these energy levels, or the rings, and the farther you go out, the bigger, the more energy. So, <coughs> when an electron is at the lowest ring, the closest one to the center is the lowest energy, we would call that the ground state. And if the electron were to get a burst of energy and hop up to a bigger ring, we would call that uh, we would say that that is in an excited state. And the way that an electron uh, gets that energy is usually will give it energy in the form of some kind of light. So I could shine some kind of light in here, oh, and that light would hit the electron. The electron would be, have a burst of energy and would then bump up to a higher level. Now, uh, in the example I just gave you, I chose red light, and so red might be the energy necessary to jump from here to here. Remember that uh, of the visible colors, red is the lowest energy. So if we go back to the ground state again, uh, if we wanted to, if we knew that red would get it from here to there, then clearly a bigger energy photon, a higher energy photon, something further this way, like blue, for example, if we shined it <coughs> a blue photon on it and hit it, that might electron might go up to a higher energy level. So electrons can absorb these photons and go up in energy level. Or similarly, if they want to go back down, the electron could radiate out the photon and fall back to the lower energy state. And so those are some of the basics about the Bohr model. <coughs> uh, some of uh, the very basics about how it works. And so the amount of energy that it radiates, whether it's a red photon or a yellow or a blue, uh, is related to how different, the how big of a gap between the energies there are in the different rings. So you have these rings of various sizes known as energy levels, and the further ones out are the bigger ones. And <coughs> uh, unless an electron is excited, given energy, it's always going to stay at the lowest or the ground state. And whenever it gets energy, it can kick up a level, and whenever it goes back down a level, it kicks that energy back out. And so th those are the very basics, and we'll see some other demonstrations using uh, some visualization tools uh, in the next video. One last thing, though, before we move on. Uh, I neglected to talk about uh, the actual person who gave us this model, the Niels Bohr. He was a Danish physicist back in the 30s who came up with this. He was essentially applying Planck's uh, chunkiness, or his quantized energy levels, to the atom. So that's where all this comes from. We have this chunkiness, this, I can either this energy or this energy or that energy, but nothing in between that was all kind of uh, coming from what Planck had discovered.